Chapter 7, Reunion. <laughs> Haven't seen these two in a while. Naga! Oh, this is the reunion. <laughs> Naga Korra reunion. Oh, the flying squirrel is there. I miss you so much, girl. Poor Naga. Well, aren't you a sight for sore Wee. eyes? Bumju and I sure missed you. He looks fit. He got in shape. I'm proud of you all for finding Korra. I feel like I'm coming home right now. As fun as the season is so far, there is something different about it. Like it's missing the the connection of everyone. Tenzin's definitely playing less of a role. So is Mako. Mako's not really around. Where's Mako and Prince Wu, come to think of it? Welcome home. I thought I was strong enough to stop her. I feel like such a failure. No one expected you to handle Kuvira on your own. It's up to all of us to find a way to deal with her. We're just glad to have you back. Hey, look at Tenzin. Korra needs some Tenzin healing right now. He feels different from like, anxious Tenzin of a couple seasons ago. Everyone's growing, everyone's growing. <laughs> Is he carrying Varric? Oh no. Leave me here, let the worms gobble me up. Kuvira fooled us both into doing her dirty work. You know how we're gonna make it up to the world? By getting back to Republic City and warning everyone what she's up to. Take my hand and march with me out of this forest. Yes. Hell yeah. No wonder I made you a mover star. <laughs> Alright, I'll take the driver's seat for a while. My feet could use a break. That's so awesome. Damn, that speech was the best. I think I said a couple episodes ago that I hope Bolin becomes like King of Kings. He's turned into the man. He can lava bend, giving inspiring speeches. He deserves to be carried. Bolin is such a, I don't know, I draw so much inspiration from him. I think people look at him as foolish sometimes and there's definitely that aspect of him, right? Like he can be a little bit naive, but I think those are side effects of something that's really beautiful about Bolin, which is that he's always looking to the bright side. He's always looking to see the best in people, the best in the situation. And it's admirable to me because it's so hard to be that way. It would be really easy, like in this situation, for example, to just spiral downwards to hopelessness, like Varric, you know, Varric had his moment there. So many things are against Bolin right now. He's stuck in the forest. Nobody believes in him. The odds are stacked way against them with Kuvira. Still, he's able to like, stand strong and do something positive. The way he navigates through that is by looking at what he can do. And I live for that. I live for those moments. It's so it's so cool. There's this idea that, you know, optimists are are missing something. Like I've heard it said that one downside of being too optimistic is that you have a lesser grasp on reality. But I still think it's worth having that tool in your belt, you know, like being able to look for the positive and then guide that towards actually taking steps that make things better rather than getting stuck like in a, you know, a downward spiral. Awesome. I love you, Bolin. These videos are just becoming Bolin Appreciation Day every day. Also, I love their hair and unshavenness. Just had to say that. Okay, oh boy. Here we go. <laughs> well, that didn't last long. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Seems like unfair, unfair balance. I hope you haven't been waiting long. Only three years. Oh. And I'm loving the hair. Right? Mako, there he is. Cora. Hi, Mako. Feels good, feels good. Reunion. Prince Wu, rightful heir to the throne, and this guy's boss. <laughs> I bet he's told you a lot about me. Nope, not a thing. Then we have so much Oof, to talk about. A little handsy about. there. Can you go into the Avatar state again? I was worried when you told me you couldn't. Wait, when did she tell you she couldn't? Oops, cat's out of the bag. Why didn't you ever write to me? Or bowl in? I don't know. Mako, if it makes you feel any better, she didn't write me either. Yeah, I mean, I get Mako's feelings, but he's over, overreacting. It's not about him. I feel like if I'm in Mako's shoes, the reason I would act this way is if I have some fear that I'm not doing enough for Korra. And then her not writing me validates that, that suspicion I have that I'm not enough to help, you know, that I'm not enough to be a friend. But still, you gotta, you know, give her a break. It was a tough spot. She was not in a great place, obviously. And for the record, she didn't write Prince Wu either. So, there you go. I went to visit my father for the first time. I guess I finally felt ready to try and forgive him. You sure you can trust him? He might just be manipulating you again. No, oh, no, no, no. Be there for her. You don't get to disappear for three years and then act like you know what's best for me. I'm not gonna hold your hand every time you have to empty your royal bladder. Go to the bathroom on your own for once. Well, this is going well, this whole thing. Do you always go to the bathroom with him? <laughs> I don't go Good with question. him with him. I just stand there in the general vicinity while he... I don't want to talk about it. No, it. Yes, he does. You know, I want them to have a nice heartfelt reunion, but I get it. There's a lot going on. Everyone's a little bit raw. The situation with Asami and Korra, there's like times when someone says something to get actual advice or to solve a problem and times when people just want to say things out loud safely. And I think for Asami, that was the latter. And Korra, like, questioning it came from a good place, but it just wasn't the right moment. And Asami undoubtedly has fears of her own about that, right? Like, she's still testing out that space. So any challenge to what she said is, you know, it's going to bring up her own fear. Time for Prince Wu's bathroom adventure. Good afternoon, sir. 
Perhaps a spritz of cologne to freshen up? Make it a double, buddy. Whoop! Down! Whoop. Oops. I wish Pabu were here. He could just chew us out of this. You know who else has incisors sharp as a knife? Julie. Julie. <laughs> Hello, fellow travelers! I don't suppose you could help us out of this net. Wait a minute. First we have Dagobah. Now we have them trapped in a tree in the forest. Are these the Ewoks? Are they going to destroy Kuvira's army with trees? I wonder what's taking Wu so long. He's not one to miss out on lunch. I'll go check on him. You're not going to get to eat lunch. Sorry. I'll be right back. Wow, she's a, she has a good instinct. Haven't seen him. <laughs> I'm in laundry. <laughs> <laughs> Team Avatar, assemble! Without Bolin. Oh well. Get in! <laughs> Hang right at the next block. Oh yeah, Marco's the police. I know these streets better than you! Oh, trust in Batman. Nice. Where is <laughs> that was a very practical way to end that. All oh, hail the great uniter. They must have moved Wu to a different vehicle when we lost sight of them. The one time I don't watch him pee, and this is what happens. The truth comes out. Nice. How did a bunch of water and firebenders end up in one of Kuvira's re-education camps? Kuvira's been purging states of anyone who's not of Earth Kingdom origin and locking them up. Oh. What are you acting so surprised for? If any of us want to get out of the Earth Empire alive, we'll have to trust each other. That's what Bolin's best at. That definitely took Kuvira up to a new level of evil. So Kuvira just wants Earthbenders? Is that what it is? So much for order and peace and balance. How do you know where Wu is just by touching some spirit vines? I learned how to connect to people's energy through them. From Who Toph. taught you that? Lin's mom. I found her in the swamp. Yeah. You met Toph? Right? What was she like? Amazing. A cranky, more miserable version of Lin? True. Is that even possible? <laughs> you forgot to say the most awesome person in the universe. It makes me so happy that Toph, like, has played the role of wise master. Then why are you bringing them through here? Camp 14's back the other way. You think we don't know where Camp 14 is? Kuvira wants some transfer. Then I'll need to see the transfer order. Right, this is the Earth Kingdom after all, where paperwork reigns supreme. Listen, pal, I had to fight off two badger moles, six wolf bats, and 18 hog monkeys to get these guys. I am in sore need of a shower, and I have blisters that are the size of cantaloupes and twice as juicy. So you can let us through, or you can give me your name and rank, and I'll pass it on to Kuvira. Merrick leaning on his best skills. Oops. Stop them! They're traitors to the Empire! And you got no Julie to help you this time. Oh. I love seeing this. Derek? <laughs> Look at this guy. The Sami makes good products. Boy, I sure hope this works. Still got that Varric touch. Awesome. In case we needed a reminder of how awesome Varric is, add clutch to his long list of amazing qualities. Varric, wait! We can't leave them! Thanks. You didn't have to come back. Yeah. I kinda That's Bolin. Everyone out! I'm not going up there! Ah! There we go. Let's let me get some action. She can handle it. Wow. How about I take you out for a night on the town? Really? You're asking me out right now? So, I'll put you down for a maybe? How about a never? <laughs> Not exactly what I imagined for our first day back together. But it was kind of like old times. Right. Except for the getting on each other's nerves part. That's like old times. That is like old times for me and Cora. Yeah. I'm sorry things got so tense earlier. I guess after being apart for three years, there's bound to be a bit of an adjustment period. Yeah. But it's great to have you back. There's no place else I'd rather be. That's what I want. There you go. <laughs> Man, Cora's so hard on him. Greatest friends a guy could have. It makes sense why they're fighting. They've all been kind of hiding from each other. Or at least Cora has been sort of hiding things from other people. And Asami also going through her own thing. Mako, I guess, he's just been sort of left out. So it's like when you don't connect, your mind just starts to develop things in a vacuum. And 
you get further and further disconnected from reality. Earlier I talked about Bolin and his optimistic thinking and how there can be some inaccuracy in that. You know, like if you're overly positive, you might miss things that are directly in front of you. But I think that also applies to negative thoughts as well. We tend to think the negative thoughts we have have more weight than the, the positive thoughts we have, when actually negative thoughts can also take on a new fictional life of their own as well. I think some people find safety in that. It's a feeling like if I if I think everything through negatively, it's, it's preparing me. But the problem with that is in that way too, you can also become divorced from reality. And so I think it's important to just always keep that in mind. Like your thoughts are just that. They're just thoughts and they're not necessarily indicative of the actual state of affairs, the actual state of your life. The only way actually through that is like, just action and actually trying to ground yourself to those things and just see what happens. Them coming together, they have all this anxiety about each other and what does this person think of me? What does this mean? Why didn't she contact me? But the truth is that they're all really good people. They all really care about each other very much and they have their own issues. And them coming together for like five minutes just hashes all that out Im immediately. So like all of Korra's worrying about Mako not understanding of, you know, being a burden. It's all okay. It's all going to be fine. This is Asami's place. She was nice enough to let my family stay here after they fled Boston. All right. Say. Mako, it's so wonderful to. <gasps> oh, Grandma. Are you? <laughs> no, I forgot she's like like a royalty worshiper. It's an honor, Grandma Mako. Ooh, there you go. She loves royalty. Yeah, she does. Now, where's the nearest bathroom? I have been holding it all day. Oh yeah, you didn't get to go. I'd like to apologize for what Kavir has put you through. Why don't you come with us? On that hunk of junk? No, thanks. I'm allergic to drowning. You think you're gonna escape Barrack's girlfriends on this piece of junk? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? <clears throat> I mean, uh, we'd love a lift. Yeah. <laughs> what was that? Yeah. <laughs> this area is overrun with spirit vines, and they appear to be even more powerful than the samples we took from Republic City. Oh boy. Harvest these vines until there's nothing left. Wait, are they where I think they are? They're not in the swamp, are they? No, they are, you evil woman. Where's Ta? You're gonna get messed up. Are you crazy? You're gonna get wrecked, I hope. <laughs> I'm really grateful for this episode because there was so much action ramping up. One thing I love about past seasons is they do a great job switching it up between like awesome action episodes and philosophical and political drama, but then zoom into the, the really personal drama, the personal relationships. And this episode gave me that. It wasn't much. It was just kind of, you know, slices like Bolin and three quarters of Team Avatar. But still, it gave me, it gave me that, that feeling that I love. All right, but that's the end of episode seven. I'll see you tomorrow for episode eight.